Hi, I'm Mike Stanton. It's February 4th. This is the BAM Weekly Muni Market Update. I'm here with Grant Dewey and Chris Flossie from BAM's Capital Markets Desk. Very interesting and volatile week in the markets this week. Uh, after last week, we continued to see outflows. Uh, Lipper reported $2.9 billion of outflows, uh, third consecutive week of outflows uh, after 44 uh, consecutive weeks of inflows. Um, that large number, though, as Eric Kazatsky over at Bloomberg pointed out, uh, really reversed after the first of the month. Uh, the outflows continued through January 31st, and then uh, mutual funds reported inflows uh, on the first couple of days of February. And that turn could be seen in the markets. If you take a look at municipal yields, the MMD index uh, surged through Tuesday and then started to come down a little bit. Uh, Grant, you've been through a lot of cycles in the market, uh, volatile times like this. Rather than diving through the numbers again, they are what they are, why don't you tell us a little bit about the psychology? What's it like to be on a desk uh, during a market environment like this? It's, uh, you know, li liquidity becomes a very precious uh, thing. So you're you, know, you have accounts, uh, clients that, you know, they, they want to be sellers, but they don't want to weigh on the market. Um, you know, as funds look for liquidity, they also look to lower their book yield. And so what you see is a lot of, uh, you know, which tend to be lower coupon bonds. So we kind of hit an inflection point uh, on threes where they sort of gapped uh, lower and became, you know, uh, discounts. And so you know, for a little while, the, um, there's really more of like structure risk than credit risk. People, uh, a lot of these lower coupons, there's neg negative complexity, and you also have de minimis that starts to weigh into the thinking. So, um, so it ends up being a lot of pressure there, uh, very little liquidity. It was kind of, um, you know, um, uh, feels near and far, I think, for a lot of the deaths. So, um, but there's still, you know, I think there's been a healthy amount of trading, as you said, in the middle of this week, there were a couple strong days, uh, we had a little bit of a snapback uh, in MMD of you know, more than 10 basis points on the long end. But uh, there is, you know, the, the question is kind of when this becomes the higher rate, uh, almost like a self-fulfilling prophecy. And, and, you know, does it really matter where, where rates are? You do, you do have... Um, you know, from a uh, um, from a credit standpoint, um, there is uh, you know for most of 2021, the, the market traded like a rate market. There was very little credit differentiation. I think we'll continue to see a little bit more of that, and uh, and so that will be uh, that will be new. But it does uh, you know um, uh, traders are are losing money. We had a little bit better performance in munis this week, but. You know, it's a frustrating time. Uh, you've gone through a long period where every deal is oversubscribed. Uh, they they free, they trade up, everybody's happy. And so uh, we're in a little bit of a, a period here that we haven't seen for a while. And Grant, when those 3% uh, bonds shift into a, a discount environment, how does that impact uh, the uh, economics for insurance? Good question. Uh, so, you know, as I described, uh, liquidity becomes kind of near and dear on the threes. And so when we had that gap down, we saw quite a pickup in our secondary business from, from uh, you know, uh, regional dealers, large dealers with retail distribution. And so the insurance uh, on, on those kind of parsed type coupons become, you know, a, uh, a very valuable um, liquidity uh, tool for the dealer. So we actually... In, uh, in January, almost two thirds of our of the volume of our secondary market insurance was uh, kind of coupon driven in, in uh, a three percent coupon, which, again, become probably the least liquid structure in the market. And that's where the secondary insurance uh, becomes a big, uh, a big addition. And when you start pricing those bonds to maturity rather than to the call, the insurance effectively becomes cheaper. Is that the right way to think about it? Correct. Yeah, you can amortize the cost of insurance to maturity. So uh, essentially, if you look at the, um, the, the DV01, the basis point cost of the insurance really gets almost cut in half uh, on a bond price to maturity versus a 10 year call. So um, that's another good point is it becomes a lot more cost effective also. Right. And I would just Thanks. add that I think late last year, we saw in the current in the rate environment, we saw a lot uh, more transactions priced with those lower, lower coupon structures. So in this current rate environment, we're seeing many, many more of these QSIPs pop up where this kind of dynamic is, is present. 
Sure, uh, it's difficult to come to market with a PAR bond. So a lot of these threes that we're seeing as PARs type bonds now, uh, were issued a 50 or 75 basis point premiums. Um, so, uh, and in the taxable market, uh, where most bonds are, or just about all bonds are issued, and taxable immunities, all bonds are issued at the coupon. Uh, we have been seeing that dynamic here uh, for a little while as treasuries have backed up, but now uh, tax exempts are entering that same um, uh, dynamic. And certainly the volatility uh, is not going to be eased by this morning's unemployment report, much stronger number than expected. Uh, certainly an expectation that the Fed uh, will not slow uh, and may even accelerate the pace of rate increases that it had uh, telegraphed already, right? Uh, yeah, exactly. So you got you know, 10 years back at a 192 now. And, and uh, you know, again, I think this has been built into a lot of thinking. But uh, when we get these outflow cycles, if that's indeed, uh, you know, what we're kind of entering in, we're certainly not in it yet. Um, that does tend to be uh, muni liquidity sort of swings from extreme to extreme. And, uh, and so, you know, in 2020, 2021, we're very different very different years. And so 2022 is off to a start where it looks like uh, there may be a little bit more of a balance between supply and demand, which I think is good for the market. And so Chris, over uh, the new issue market, always so uh, influential in setting prices and setting tone in the muni market. What did you see there this week? Uh, so this week, the calendar was a little bit muted. I think the number was inside 7 billion. Um, at BAM, we had a fairly active week. We priced $285 million of par in the new issue market. And this week's activity, we touched nine states, and that was across 21 series. So that was uh, a good number of uh, deals to price this week. Um, some of the deals to highlight this week, there was a $45 million Elkhart, Indiana lease transaction that Stiefel had priced in the negotiated market. And there were also, uh, not terribly common, but there were two larger California school districts that priced this week in the competitive space that BAM ended up ensuring there was a Calexico USD deal for $43 million with RW Baird and then a Bakersfield school district in California as well with uh, Hilltop Securities. And that deal actually has an underlying rating of AA3 by Moody. So nice to see that strong credit uh, come with BAM insurance. Right. And next week's calendar, a little bit lighter. What, uh, what stands out to you there? Right, a little bit more muted again next week. The number is actually inside $6 billion. Uh, we are seeing a lot of uh, transportation names continue to price and come to market. This week, we have the Portland, Oregon airport coming along with the Greater Orlando Airport in Florida. Um, and there's also a, a junior lean Ohio Turnpike transaction. So we continue to see a lot of activity in the transportation sector. I think a lot of that has to do with some of the federal funding that was received um, and the strength of that, of that sector. So we, we will see those deals come next week. Um, as for BAM, we have roughly $115 million of par insured to price next week. Um, there is a $34 million Wabash County in Indiana's transaction. That's also a lease deal with Stiefel. And then there's also a $23 million Katy Development Authority in Texas uh, with Hilltop. And also on the competitive side, we expect to see the, the volume increase next week in terms of number of transactions, but that average par size is going to remain inside 10 million. So a lot of deals, but a lot of smaller to mid-sized deals expected to come. I think a lot of uh, issuers and their advisors looking at that rate environment, uh, thinking about uh, when the right time to act on refundings might be. Um, whether you, you move now, if you expect rates are going to keep going up, or if you think there's, there's going to be a break, uh, hang on a little while longer. So uh, tough decisions, I'm sure, conversations going on across the market right now. Thanks, gentlemen, for your time. Uh, we'll talk to you next week. Thanks, Thanks Mike. Mike.